Alrighty, here we go with another Eric reaction. This movie is called The Prisoner of Zenda Incorporated. It's one of five million movies called The Prisoner of Zenda that are about various things. I think some of them are based on a book. There's also a Princess of Zenda. There's also Zeldas, Prisoners of Zeldas and Princesses of Zeldas. I had to triple check to make sure I'm getting the correct movie. This one's the one that has Donis Davis and William Shatner in it. So there we go. William Shatner being in it means we're going to get a Cornish ham chewing all the scenery possible. So that's exciting. I'm also excited to see Catherine Isabel, you know, because I'm watching this on Plex and they show all the actors, right? Catherine Isabel, she's like 42 now, but um, I've been aware of her acting since the 90s. She was in a bunch of genre shows like Stargate SG-1. Uh, she was in Hannibal, uh, some other things. And what's interesting, she's a great actress, but then she shit talks productions after she leaves. I've actually worked with some people who've worked on sets with her. They were extras, and she's just a very super negative person. So I have kind of a love-hate relationship with her. I, I really like her acting. I, I, like, everything I've seen her in has been phenomenal, but she's just one of these actors that has a shitty attitude, and I would not want to personally work with, even though you got the talent, man. It's such a balancing act. As a producer, sometimes you're like, well, this person's an asshole, but damn, what they put on film is good. So, I, I, like I said, I've always been kind of compelled by that. And she's not the... There, there are tiers to this. She's a low-tier asshole, right? She's the shit-talk-behind-your-back asshole. She's not not showing up because they're high, you know, throwing other actors under the bus, sabotaging the director, you know, changing lines against, you know, orders. Like, there are tiers. There are a bunch of us assholes I absolutely would not work with above me, above her, right? So she's one who's probably questionable. But anyway, so be interesting. This is, I think she was, Looking at the timeline, she was born in um, 80, 81, 82, somewhere around there. And this came out in 96. So she would have been a teenager. This would be one of her first roles. So I'm kind of interested in that. Obviously, I love Donna Davis. Phenomenal actor. He's somebody I would definitely have wanted to work with. His uh, audio commentaries on uh, the Stargate shows. And he may have even done one, because you know, he was on X-Files, of course. I only recently saw him in, in Twin Peaks. For me, he's Stargate SG-1 in X-Files. And he played a military general in both or whatever, you know. But his commentaries are hilarious. Corn-fed, country-ass, country witticisms, and his accent's a lot stronger in the audio commentaries than it is when you see him on film. You know, he must do something to his accent. And he's another one of these actors that kind of wanders off the page. You know, does it, like Ron Perlman's another one. They, they don't stick to the lines. So, it'll be just, it, this, this, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch the acting. I don't know if the movie's going to be good, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, this being on Plex, I think this is like I had to do with another movie that was on Plex. The, they do the picture in a picture format, and you can't like minimize the browser in such a way that I can normally do full reactions where I just show you the bottom with the, the subtitles. So if that's correct, if I'm remembering correctly, we'll have to do a picture in picture format. I don't know if I'll be able to put this on YouTube. I'll give it a shot, you know. But like it'll probably be a scoop, stupid Google Drive thing. We'll see. Plex is, is is the worst, but this is the only place you can find a movie, right? So other than some shitty YouTube copy that has a beginning cut off. So who wants that? All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, I just started to check it out, and of course, it's also has commercials. I'm gonna have to cut around, so the sync may drift a little bit with me cutting the commercials out. But I think I was wrong. Either I was wrong, or that was a different thing, or is it different? I was on a different website. I don't know. Like I'm juggling a lot of shit here. But it does seem like we're going to get the normal, you know, you can see it on the bottom of the screen. So, excellent. That makes me very happy. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and go. We're going on one. Funny thing happened on the way to the market. Got about halfway through this movie. I was doing the traditional uh, full reaction, which is I take what I'm watching and I just stick it up here as I record, right? It's like part of my software. I can move this thing around. You've seen me do it, right? So, like, I, you know... I've got the the streaming browser up there, and I can see it moving as I record, right? Like, just so I know that there's nothing going on and everything. And we're capturing, and, and the, the subtitles are showing to the people, you know, for later in, the, in this part of my video file. So I don't have to do this in post. When I first started this, I would take what I was watching, superimpose it on the top. But you could run into sync issues, right? Like, if, some, if something's hanging up and I didn't notice it or something like that, the sync would be off. This way, 
when I'm talking, what I'm reacting to is literally up there. So it's, it's just a better way to do it. And it saves a lot of time on editing. But there's one thing that, that I didn't factor in that used to be a problem over a year ago, which was there's this anti-piracy software in some of these browsers, which is why I had to change the way I do that. I had to start going to like pirate sites and stuff like that to get all my movies and, and TV shows because like, you know, the, all the streaming services had this thing where you could no longer sc screen record what they were doing, including this, what I do here. You couldn't screen record in this way. It, would just, it wouldn't show anything up there. But back then, over a year ago, when I was running into this, it wouldn't show it as I was watching it. Like, I would be watching something, I would start playing, and it wouldn't show up. There would just be a black screen. This is the first time I encountered this. What happened was, I watched half this movie, and as I was recording, I could see the image moving up there. So I assumed it was capturing the image, but it wasn't. So I'm going to show you a little clip here of what it, what it captured. They probably are all rich kids, now that I think about it. <laughs> and uh, you notice, by the way, the hypocrisy of the commercials work. It shows the commercials. The commercials come in full glory. Hold on, we'll record the commercials for you. Stupid ass. Well, we don't, there's no anti-piracy when it comes to commercials, but we're not going to show you the goddamn movie. What kind of shit is that? Look, as I've said before, I think consider reacting to something, promoting it as like sports highlights. You're not pirating it. You know, I'm not making money off this. People still have to go to the source if they want to get the audio. Like, nobody's going to watch this. I seriously don't think anybody is ever going to watch this, just my version, without the audio. That would be dry as hell. Like, I don't... I, but anyway, I'm, I'm wandering. Like, the only reason I'm bringing any of this up is that because the first half... Let me back up a step. What I, my solution to this was, okay, you motherfucker... I'm going to just screen record both halves of the movie, the first half that I've already seen, and the second half I haven't seen. This is not a video file that you're seeing, right? Screen record it and then finish the movie that way. And then we're going to have to go in and meticulously edit in post and superimpose it on the top there, right? You know, I, w I was counting on being able to see it up here, so I didn't give any audio cues. You normally, under other circumstances, like if I was going from a video file, so I might say pausing mark, starting mark, and stuff like that. I have audio cues so I can sync everything up. I thought we were getting the image, so I would sync with the image. So I don't know how the hell this is going to work in editing. I'm going to have to go by what I say and try to remember from three days ago when I first watched the first half of this movie what I was reacting to, right? And then cut out all the pieces in between and, and sync it all up with the superimposed uh, video file that I screen recorded over this, right? It's going to be patchy. It, I don't know how, how it's going to work. It may be a shitty reaction, I don't know, like it just it may be all kind of all over the place, I don't know, I'm going to do the best I can, but I just wanted to warn you ahead of time, like this, it, what sucks though is I've only seen half the movie so far, because I'm recording this right before I finish the movie, and because of my schedule, like this, was, I was doing this on Sunday, when I wanted to release another movie, before the end of the month, Sunday was the end of the month, right, so once I realized this was going on, I was like, well, I'm going to have to screen record this, that's going to take two hours, so I just, that's when I pivoted and just went ahead and did Aberration real quick, right? Put Aberration out, and a couple days later, I was going to finish this. So that's what we're doing now. Because it's been three days, I don't know if I can remember what I was saying in relationship to the movie. So this this is going to be a, a shit show, is basically what I'm saying. Which is too bad, because I really enjoyed the first half of the movie. This was one of my favorite reactions to do. I was having a really good time. And the funny thing is, the only reason I noticed this was halfway through the movie, I had lost my train of thought, and like I sometimes do, I stop my recording, go back and open up my last video file, and watch the last couple of minutes of what I was saying, so I could pick up my train of thought, put that away, start the reaction again, and pick up my train of thought on camera, and oh yeah, by the way, I was saying this, and finish my thought. That's when I noticed that the, it wasn't capturing any video. I was like, what the hell? So, thank God I did that, right? Or we would have to do this for the whole movie. That would really be a shit show. At least the second half is going to be smooth because I'm going off a video file. So, that'll be easy. The first half of the movie is going to be the nightmare. But um, the real irony is, I had actually completed my train of thought. Because you'll see me right before I switch shirts. You're going to see me say, what the hell was I saying? And I keep going on for another minute or something. Come to find out, I, what I had forgotten, I had already finished my train of thought. It was about how he's going to be facing the, the, the bully, dickhead, whatever, in sports in, in, during a baseball game, right? I'd actually finished that trade of thought. 
But, hey, solved half the problem. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get back into it. But, uh, man, what in the fucking nightmare. It's just technical issues, man. The only problem in, with my job is technical software issues. You know, just every now and then hardware issues because my computer's really slow. It'll crash if my files I'm exporting are too long. So that slows everything down, right? But uh, other than that, like, you know, I enjoy every other part of my job. But the technical issues, shit like this, infuriating. Three, two, one. I will check, see if this is... Uh, yeah, um, doesn't look like we can get subtitles, unfortunately, but, you know, there should be enough visual stuff here to, yeah, we're getting enough visuals for you to sync. It's a Showtime movie. I wonder if it's a Showtime movie. I bet it was a Showtime Hallmark this was a direct-to-DVD. What We call it direct-to-DVD if we're talking cable movies. It's also called cable movies. It's all kind of the same thing. Didn't appear. It was, there was no the theatrical release is what matters. That's how you differentiate it in the uh, indie world. Jonathan Daxon seems to be the star of the movie. He plays two characters, it looks like. And um, never heard of him. I don't know if he was ever in anything ever again. We'll see if he's any good. I'm pretty sure they misspelled Catherine Isabel's name. That would be hilarious. No wonder she's so bitter. <laughs> Well, you fucking Shatner. Can't wait. He just turned like 90-something, 90 99 or some shit. That dude is old as dinosaur dirt. Yeah. You stink. Why'd you hesitate? Oh, it's a clever, clear sign, man. You hesitate again. Yeah, he tries. This was right the, at the height of Donis Davis's powers. He was doing Stargate. She wanted had just done uh, X Files. <clears throat> a few years after doing Twin Peaks, the '90s were a good decade for him. So this isn't anything like you know with a budget at all. The I'm talking about the baseball game. Like, you guys are playing in somebody's yard, man. Like, you have no budget. I've seen this dude before, too. Oh, is that Shatner? Holy shit. I don't recognize him when he's not a million years old. That was about 100 pounds ago, too. I know I'm wanting to talk. I'm just saying. <laughs> so he has two people. Twins, okay, well, that's what we're doing. What was that, the, the man in the iron mask? Is that what that was? There was also another, the prince and the pauper, I think. Yeah. You have failed this city. Uh, before the internet, when you could have found this out on your own. So your coach can troll you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. Dude, you're like 12. You get no votes. Meanwhile, we know William Shatner's evil, right? Hey, man, you got that blunt? 
<laughs> here, here you go. <laughs> Dude, you get your payout after, afterwards. Yeah, Uncle Mike's evil. You might be evil. I, I don't know. They're do, definitely going to do a Prince and a Pauper scenario here. You know, it's like a, um, literally a king situation. Line of succession. <laughs> That's right. Chew that scenery. That's right. Improv like a motherfucker. He was about 10 years into his stick by now at this point. Somebody's getting their finger cut, by the way. Believe that. He wasn't as bad as he was going to be on Haven in about 10 years, but he was already pretty bad at this point. I'm going to some samurai swords. Man. What do we do here at Zenda, by the way? Okay. Software, it seems to me. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's why I killed him. <laughs> you goddamn right. Yeah, he is aggressively smoking that cigar. You got another phallic symbol for me? That's why we're doing. That's why he had a laptop. That's not why we're seeing a PC now. It's it's a very high tech movie for the time, right? It's a high-tech uh, uh, company. Yeah. So, where's the mouse? Um, oh, my God. Look at this operating system. Incompetent. <laughs> we couldn't do that back in 96. What's with the dog? Dude, I was dumb as hell, and I could operate the operating system. I was a writer, not a tech op, and I, you know, I never had trouble learning computers. Now you're out. Five weeks is enough. I thought maybe it had been just a few days and they're kicking him out. The butler has spoken. They say Bill Gates used to look at every line of code back in the day. Back when it was still basic, right? And by basic, I mean the operating system, not, you know, the label. Dude, I'm like 12 trying to run a company. Get off my ass. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. You're dismissed. <laughs> I actually toyed with basic in uh, high school a little bit after that. It was kind of fun. And I tried to learn Java and think Java was really my barrier. I, I could do basic. I could write programs in basic. I wrote a few. Simple stuff. But, you know, just it, they would run, you know. Java, I learned some of Java, but only, oh, you got to be shitting me, for real. No 
fucking shot that they just showed us. They, they, they did a close-up of the goddamn lunchbox. you got to be shitting me. <laughs> He's inserting a bully to take care of this kid, I guess. Okay, that's I thought it was a hired gun. That's his son, okay. <laughs> what a dick. Yep, he's a dick, though, just like his dad. But see, you know, we're basic operated on line numbers, you know, 10, 20, 30, and you could do 15. You start with 10 between, so you can put six shit in between without having to rewrite everything, right? So you do line numbers. Java operated on uh, key phrases. The first word in a, in a paragraph would be a phrase, so you could, you could send something down to that paragraph, right? And then go back up, and you didn't need the lines, and it was a lot easier to use. And there she is. Wow, she's young here. But um, it was simpler to use. It was, it was better, but more complicated. Like, it was better for a programmer who knew what the hell they were doing, but it's more complicated to learn, right? So that's when I kind of washed out. I was like, okay, I guess I won't be programming anything. And then who knows what the hell they use now. They have programs that write programs now, you know. <laughs> you bitter ass bitch. <laughs> A better way to navigate this would be to pretend to like you. But then you just have to do what you got to do for the good of the company. Not be some passive aggressive bitch ass from the jump, man. <laughs> I love this man too. What a ham. He specifically grew a mustache for this role. You know he did. <laughs> Why do you have to emphasize every word like that? <laughs> I'd get a writing crop and beat the shit out of him if I was the director. <laughs> My God. Yeah, fuck them. Downsize them before it became popular. Get them out of here. That one dude they keep looking to looks like the father of the, the kids in this movie. They look similar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to kick his ass in the boat. Nay. <laughs> you got nobody on the board. No board support. That must be his butt boy. <laughs> I rigged the vote. Yeah. Could waste our goddamn time and sit your mustache ass down. <laughs> He's going to punish the butt boy later for not raising his hand fast enough. You're lucky your key card still works. <laughs> Everybody hates this motherfucker. You see that shit? You see that body language? They hate this son of a bitch. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure you can. This man had a ball in the set every day. You know he did. Look at him. He is loving this shit. Okay, nerd, you're going to have to kill the kid and replace him. Oh, that is a kid. Jesus. I thought that was a butt boy. I told you they look alike, man. Well, if he's here, why, didn't, why wasn't he at the meeting? I'm confused. That's another reason why I didn't think it was him. Oh, they got electronics on the wall. That must be what kind of company we do. <laughs> they stink. Yeah, so you're your own, you're your own manager. <laughs> I 
I could write a thesis on his acting. I should. <laughs> I'll make you a promise. If he does any scene with any ounce of subtlety or nuance whatsoever, I'll take a shot. I promise you. I'm going to be sober as fuck. <laughs> it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away, man. I think they must have done the lunch budget because if they're working on a Showtime budget in the 90s, he still had a lot of leverage and a lot of markability in the 90s, right? He cost a lot of money. Give me an example. Uh, let me see. What was it? I think I've told this story before. 2012 or 14, somewhere around there. I had, my, uh, I had a contact in LA back then. I had her make an inquiry on uh, how much it would cost to get Mark Hamill to attend the convention I was going to do. Just a filmmaking convention, right? Just come in, do a couple panels, and leave. It'd be like, you know, six hours of work plus travel, right? And the word I got back was, it would be $80,000 just to walk through the door. Not counting to actually, anything I wanted to do would be more, and travel expenses. You know, and it'd be like a day of travel before, a day of travel after, even though they'd only be there for six hours. So, that was him to show up at some place and just do a little bit of talking, right? So think about what it would cost to get him to work on a film for a couple of days. That's Mark Hamill. William Shatner's bigger. So that gives you an idea of what kind of budget we're talking about here, you know? Because this whole thing was probably shot for $5 million or less, you know? <laughs> this ain't bad. It would be hard to shoot sports. I never did that. I love sports to watch, but it'd be hard to shoot sports. Probably be like any action scene, really. Yeah, <laughs> you're out. Oh, okay. I guess it makes more sense he was safe. <laughs> well, the reason that is, though, is because of errant balls. You know, you may have to cheat a lot of stuff, especially basketball would be really hard. If you need him to hit the hoop, can they sink a shot under pressure? A lot of times they'll do CGI for that because they just can't sink the shot. and They don't have time to waste for him to try, right? Who the fuck are... Hey, man. Good shit. What is this, Fargo? All oh, G's. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's in it for the thrill, not the money. <laughs> he dropping. <laughs> what a dumbass. Why did you have to... <laughs> This is a bug boy. I guess he doesn't look much like the kid. Just a little bit, you know. I guess he's a brother-in-law. <laughs> he was... Skating on the edge of nuance in that scene, but not quite. He had to do that little flourish with his cigar. Also, his first line was terrible. <laughs> After that, though, you know. My God. They might as well be having coal-fired wangs. There used to be a computer called a wang, right? Before PCs. You have to throw coal in the back, right? Just keep it, you know, because it couldn't take electricity. It's too old. 
Amy to be living large. No wonder she's here trying to mac on him. Get that money, honey. <laughs> That's right. Hey, there's only one kid in class who's worth a lot of money right now. <laughs> Shouldn't Arthur be getting it? That's literally his job. Just saying. Oh, no. Dude's he's wearing a, a fucking next generation. <laughs> really? I guess next generation just gone off the air. It went from 90s or from 87 to 94. <laughs> is that what that is? Pajamas? Next Generation Pajamas. That's the second Star Trek reference in this movie. Y'all ain't shit. So, you got all the money now that your dad died, right? Yeah. But I'm not sorry you have all the money now. <laughs> I'm just being a dick. <laughs> I didn't think you meant a drink drink. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Here's how much game he has. This is supposed to be a zero. Baseball. This is how they're going to meet each other. <laughs> yeah. I wasted my time walking all the way over here for nothing. You took back your offer of whiskey immediately before I could accept it, and now you're not going on a date with me. Well, I'm going to still keep trying because you're rich. <laughs> He's not going to answer that question. He's not going to answer that question. My God, this is just... This is why he did the movie. We didn't see William Shatner as a writing credit. <laughs> why is it embarrassing? I guess in the 90s it was embarrassing. Man, Muffers be showing up in court with uh, Star Trek uniforms now. There is no chill. Nobody gives a fuck, man. I guess back then it was still embarrassing. I just got it. The prisoner of Zenda. They're going to kidnap this son of a bitch. I mean, they don't seem confident enough to actually pull it off, but, you know. They're going to kidnap the son of a bitch, and then he's going to have to get... Somehow, the other kid's going to take his place. I don't know why. Who would make that happen? Probably just... Uh, and the only reason for that would probably be they have to survive a boat or something. <laughs> Dumbass. You're probably better off being kidnapped after that, after that horrible-ass game you just displayed. Your game is worse than the other kid's baseball game. What are you, the gentleman from Buffy? Jesus. Get on with it. Dumbass! All that meticulousness for nothing. What the hell is he doing? Like, is he trying to invent MySpace? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> I thought you didn't drink milk. <laughs> so is milk gay now too? Like what is happening here? <laughs> you imagine I have to have a fucking tie when you work at a house. Ties are going out of fashion, by the way. <laughs> I don't understand the fucking book. I guess he's so insecure about his masculinity. Let's just randomly fuck with shit. Wait. I'm so confused. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm so confused. Um, wouldn't it go off? The, if I thought they'd already turned off the alarm system somehow. I, don't, I guess I wasn't really thinking it through. But the alarm's going to go off the second you penetrate the windows. It doesn't do any good going to turn it off after that. Like, if you open a door, you get 30 seconds, but not a window. The window's immediate, you know? 
I mean, I'm not going to look into it too deeply. This is clearly this movie knows what it is and it's living in that zone. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Boy, I need a word that's stronger than incompetence. I'll look it up during my next break. Because, my God, these guys are beyond the fucking pale. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's incompetent, too. How would you not hear all this shit? <sighs> fucking hell. How do you dress yourself? How can you possibly be this incompetent? My God. Why don't you yell some more, too, by the way? We need a better class of criminal, man. The Joker is right. Fucking hell. <laughs> They're even doing the... <laughs> there is... Look. I don't hate this movie. I, don't, don't get it twisted, right? I think it's fairly entertaining. Because they're trying to be Home Alone. I think, did this come out before Home Alone? But um, I think they're, they're going for the Home Alone vibe. But they're, they're, there's that, they're, there's a lot of comedic elements they're nailing. Like, you know, the, the way, there's a specific comedic way they used to walk in Looney Tunes when they were trying to be sneaky. Those guys were emulating that perfectly. When they were going up the stairs, like it was a perfect replication. Very well done. <laughs> and there's a theory about this, by the way. Theory behind this, I should say. You're trying to... <laughs> I've been dropping coins everywhere. You're trying to do something very specific here. Three grown-ass men kidnapping... Well, he's probably about 12. Kidnapping a 12, 13-year-old boy is pretty fucking creepy on the face of it, right? And there's just a lot of undertones you don't want to get into and you don't want to take it that realm. Especially it's Showtime. It's Showtime. It's not Disney Channel, but still. This feels like a Disney Channel movie. So the way you reduce that, you eliminate the creepiness, you make them absolutely ridiculous. Absurd. And so it's no longer creepy. We're not even thinking about that shit. That is a very wise choice on the, on the, on the filmmaker's part, right? We got this vote today, man. <laughs> so that that was a that was a brilliant decision. I think they, that they did that exactly right. They, tone wise, that's exactly what you want to do. So that's why they're doing this, right? So I don't think this is a bad movie. I think it's actually pretty well conceived and pretty well executed. So I'm more talking about in universe, like I, you know, I kind of get immersed in things, and you know, <laughs> they left me on some rope. So the immersion factor of it. Wait, we have a maid too and nobody knows anything? From an immersion factor, I'm like, I'm, I'm livid with these guys because they're so incompetent. So that's where I'm coming from, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, no shit. This will be the ransom note. Yeah, why, how would I know? Jesus. It was already open, though. You see that? That's sloppy. <laughs> well, shit. Nowadays, we can just get a computer to print it. <laughs> Specifically, don't talk to Don S. Davis. I wonder if he's on it too. Hire a nice guy that we don't suspect so we can do a last second twist, right? Because he's managing this guy. <laughs> ransom notes. He's got a book of ransom notes. This shit is over the top, man. Yep, like I said, there was going to be a vote. You knew there was going to be a vote, right? I just noticed he also has one of the samurai dummies. 
that holds the uniform. So he really thinks he's a samurai soldier. What are the odds we're going to see this son of a bitch in that uniform with a sword before the end of this movie? He's whacking her people with it. 100%. <laughs> My God. Look, okay, I... I wasn't sure this was a comedy, uh, an over-the-top comedy at first. This is Home Alone. Is what this, this is an over-the-top comedy. I'm completely on board now. Even still, having said that this is an over-the-top comedy, Home Alone 2, right? Home Alone 1 and a half. Although it may have come out for Home Alone, I'm not sure. Even though we know this is that, his acting is still fucking ridiculous. That's what I'm talking about. That's how much of a hand this son of a bitch is, man. Perfect fucking cast. I would have done the exact same thing. <laughs> Why are you at a game under these circumstances? Of course, you're going to see the kid, right? I, I think they may have explained it in the dialogue. I wasn't paying attention either. There was a dialogue. I think it was some, probably a fundraiser. They're supporting it. They're, they're, they're paying for the team or, or a sponsor or something. So they have to make an appearance. I'm sure that was covered in the script. <laughs> this kid's going to get the best of these three idiots. <laughs> this is a great location. <laughs> Damn, now you're making it creepy. What the hell is that? What the hell was that? Huh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so intimidated. Yeah, <laughs> well, you should dress for this. <laughs> so bitch. You have a flask. Why would you pour it in your canteen, right? <laughs> These guys knew William Shatner was in the movie, so they're like, we're going to ham it up too. The fuck is he eating? Is that like a beef stick or some shit? That he just stuck, he stuck a beef stick in that nasty ass tree. He's going to use it to eat. <laughs> uh, so he'd be dropping coins so people could find him. Huh. I sure as hell won't remember I put the knife there. Oh, he put it back, okay. Why wouldn't he be in the middle? Why is he? <laughs> I guess they are putting him in the middle. <laughs> it's all now. I'm actually paying attention to the the sports scenes now. It's a bunch of quick shots. They're not showing using any wide shots because that's when you really get in trouble because you can't synchronize a, a game very well, right? There's too much uh, chaos. Like, you hit the ball completely wrong way if you hit it wrong, right? Then you have to reshoot. Missing a pitch isn't that hard. You can do that, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. That's that's another good plot reason why they're there. That makes sense. I assume they'd already covered it, but they covered it just here. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm a fan. Well, imagine this. I can see him. With my old ass eyes, I can see him from 100 feet away. And see how close he looks like the other kid. <laughs> how are you seeing this? Of course, I have face blindness. So maybe it's really easy for other people. To me, a lot of people look like each other, you know? This is crazy. That dude must have... <laughs> Look, I'm calling the CPS or you know whatever it is that you know handles perverts. <laughs> the old boy's father must have been whoring around the town, right, and has a bastard son. That's probably what this is. Because you know the Olsen twins aren't even twins, but they look a lot like each other. Not exactly like each other, but if they're not in the same room together, you probably couldn't tell the difference. You wouldn't know which one it was. Back before they came crack whores. You know, you know what I mean? Now they look really weird. And 
you know, different from each other. But back when they looked the same. That's right, he's killing it. Yeah, see, it's all a bunch of single shots, right? That you can do. I haven't seen a wide shot yet. Yeah, dude, you're creepy. Leave me alone. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah, you should go. <laughs> Why would you entertain this? Oh, okay. That would that would be a pull enough weight, you know. <laughs> Show him a picture, you dumbasses. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, like we want to kidnap you. <laughs> Look at it, that's what he's thinking. This is stock, stock fraud, by the way, what they're doing here. Are they a publicly traded company? Because if they are, they're, they're going to jail for this. <laughs> Does he have parents? I feel like they should be in on this. <laughs> hey, well, the swimming pool had a douchebag in it yesterday, so that's not good. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Huh. Wait, so we're saying this dude is a military person even here? He really did have a type back then, didn't he? This doesn't sound sus to you. <laughs> First of all, you got to show him a picture. Oh, so his parents don't live in this town. Okay. That's why they haven't run into him before either. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. These old men, these two old men want you to keep a secret. <laughs> yeah, that's not sus. My God. You gotta be shitting me. <laughs> Look, I gotta keep telling myself Home Alone, right? Home Alone, Home Alone comedy. But if this was done today, even being a Home Alone comedy, they would have to weave in some kind of an adult somewhere, you know. There would be an adult supervisor who would be on board with this. <laughs> yep, we're broke, by the way. We're literally looking at the bills before you call. So that won't be relevant to our interest. My God, we're in debt, son. Is there anything you could do? Yeah, are you any closer to getting us to some money? Yeah, yeah. No chance in hell. We're fucking broke, man. They're taking the house. I'm going to debtor's prison, just so you know. <laughs> They're not even doing money angle. It's the right thing to do. They're going with the right thing to do instead of money. I love this. 
Dad's losing his job, so I'll do this because it's the right thing to do. I love that so much. This movie's got heart, man. Yeah. This movie's got heart, man. Look at this shit. I really, really thought there'd be a financial motive here. There kind of is, but not really, you know? It's just about doing the right thing. Holy shit. You know, it's entirely possible I'm just too fucking cynical. <laughs> We're answering everything. I don't care if it is a spam call. <laughs> Money. Oh, there we go. Hey, man. So, not really a money motive. I mean, yeah, you get money with a job, but, like, he's going to work for it. He's not just going to be handed money. I like that, too. Like, it still works, right? You've got heart, man. The movie has heart. Greed is good. That sub is reading greed is good. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> what the hell is that painting up there, by the way? Is that him on a toilet? Holy shit. <laughs> Check out the satellite phone. Really? We're doing codes? Just fucking speak English. Yeah, he knows the code book. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh, yeah. He said the name. He said the name. All the pieces are clicking into place, you fucking idiot. Dumbass. Shit, I forgot to look up the, uh, a synonym for incompetent. I took a break. Damn it. <laughs> Why camping out? Like, I don't know if you'd want to do a hotel, but like, there's got to be an abandoned warehouse somewhere, right? I'll say this, though. Ain't nobody going to run up on you. Well, a hunter might, you know. I suppose. <laughs> Every one of these guys has 16 quirks. <laughs> He's learning the language. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? It's time to axe murder this son of a bitch. <laughs> I will beat you to death with a broken branch. <laughs> We're trying to fucking sleep over here. <laughs> oh my God. Fortunately, he's surrounded by morons. He already knows how he's going to get out of this. Yep, here's my note. I, I'm bailing on you guys. Don't they, like in these tournaments, don't they have like a game every day or every other day? That's the way baseball works, I think. I know they just won a game. And I think they're going to the finals next. So maybe not. You know? Maybe I have to wait for the Saturdays. Because of the TV, right? Right, so that's right. The butler's in on it, so he can coach you. I can't wait to see William Shatner's overacting when this kid walks in the boardroom. Like, I'm living for this. I have to have it. That's going to be fan-fucking-tastic. That's right. We got to clean you up. Get the hair right. Take that shitty jacket off. <laughs> but my hair. 
All right, I guess I'll let you remove the wig. Apparently, uh, you're not going to give the barber any lines, though. You have to pay him more. Computers. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> you better know this shit. He'll be better with the ladies, so he'll get the, the girl to, to like him. Sherry likes him. He'll be smoother with her. <laughs> so, you're, you want your dad to stay fired. Cool. <laughs> They're terrified. <laughs> Relate to the sub bitch. <laughs> But three days is all you need anyway, right? Who the fuck is afraid of computers? I thought he was just talking about how, like, he didn't... He didn't, you know, know anything about it, right? Dear Abby, this is a wrong letter. This could have been an email. <laughs> well, no family emergency. I thought it was his parents calling to tell him there's no family emergency. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he's never talked to the dad before. <laughs> what a great comedic premise. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you don't have to go through all this shit. <laughs> the accent thing was hilarious. I don't know what the hell he's doing with the pants, but you know. <laughs> Nothing sus about this. <sighs> this uh, fat boy here has also been in a lot of shit I've seen. I can't remember what it was. He is very familiar. He's been in some shit. I don't know that he's ever done comedy before that I've seen. Gatewick. This somebody's name is Gatewick. I like how the things blow up to show the face, right? It could just be a regular flow chart. It's got to be fancy. That's right. Learn how he walks. <laughs> don't tell me he's got to learn golf. Holy shit. So I spent way too much time on these graphics. What teenager is on the cover of fucking time? Well, I guess, you know, it, no, I take it back. If he was a CEO, he suddenly becomes CEO, CEO at like 14 to 13, whatever. <laughs> so it's a flow chart of his friends. I thought it was a fucking business flow chart. All of his social contacts. Like, that would be important. Like, you would need to know names and shit, right? What is interesting, Catherine Isabel is a, uh, I think she's of Irish or Welsh descent, one or the other. Fiona is also Irish or Welsh, so. They kept it consistent. <laughs> really? Get that shit out of my face. We already did this gag. <laughs> I think I had a Happy Days uh, lunchbox. Happy Days was my thing back then. Even though it was off the air by that time. 
<laughs> I'm being accepted by my social equals for the first time in my life. Does he need to be in school for the roost? You just need him to walk into the boardroom. That's all you need, right? Call in sick at school. The brother can call him in sick. It's just a couple days. But we wouldn't have the comedic shenanigans if he didn't go to school. So, never mind. No lockers for us to put our lunch pail in? <laughs> What does she mean by that? <laughs> oh, that's what she meant. Are you just visiting? That's what she meant by are you just visiting? She thought he was there for her. you want so do you your eyes don't match what is that man you look weird as fuck like one of them's lower than the other what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah funny but see I'm a jock so I can fight so you know this ain't this, this ain't the old me <laughs> you heard me, bitch. You want your other eye to be fucked up? Sit your ass down. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was supposed to be. He's sitting with the nerds. Of course he is. I don't know why I keep thinking of his jock because his other persona is a jock. Those are the jocks over there. You ever had your ass beat by a nerd? It'd be really embarrassing. You don't want to smoke, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bitch? <laughs> so we're doing this, huh? He's going to beat his ass on the field after he beats his ass in the classroom. you got to be shitting me. That's some weaving together some plot lines right there, man. I like that. Look at me facing each other on the field. So okay, so he's gonna miss a couple games that they felt like they could easily win that. Hey man, the fuck, dude! You're trying to kill one of these kids. Imagine if that shit he did, he's doing the whole Spider-Man. That was never gonna hit her. What are you doing? There was no man. She was fucking three feet over. Um, that was I said. I like that. I like this movie, man. Like, you know, it's completely ridiculous, but that's where it lives. So it's cool. Hey, incompetent ass. Yeah. At least he has a little bit of wherewithal to you know that that was a bad idea. Yes. I'm going to leave it on the floor so somebody can trip over it before you can get down here. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, see, that's the other problem, right? I don't know that you'd be bullying a rich kid. Maybe, maybe they're all rich kids. They probably are all rich kids now that I think about it. 
<laughs> Nerd. <laughs> Jesus effing Christ. He could just say any name and they'll be scared. How are they not in the ground yet? Like, literally. <laughs> yeah. We should probably camp here. <laughs> this looks like the same spot they were at last night. A lot of times you just move the camera to the other side when you're in the woods. Move the camera to the other side and you're, you know, you could be at the same spot. It looks completely different. Is that some bitch shaving? Are you fucking kidding me? Well, shit. <laughs> you big dummy. You're putty in his hands. You're putty in his hands. Like he's playing you like a fiddle. You're a hell of a guy, Mr. Kidnap Victim. There's no ulterior motive here. <laughs> Unbelievable. I never did look up the uh, the other word for incompetence. We need a new word for incompetence because these some bitches, man. They are beyond the pale. <laughs> this asshole, by the way. Hell no. <laughs> it was a nice try, wasn't it? No. <laughs> That's why he went to school. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> he really is a douchebag, isn't he? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> he's calling him because he's pissed. <laughs> His son is a bigger douchebag than he is, which is saying a lot, by the way. That's why he showed up. I was wondering why he showed up at school. It made no sense. It fits the narrative. <laughs> Gee, I wonder about that. <laughs> this, you know what you would think. This is very clearly what you would think, right? <laughs> yeah. Th yeah, proof of life. It, to the kidnapper. I've never seen this before. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. What must he be thinking? Probably that his son's a moron. <laughs> what a awkward ass voiceover. But of course he would come here to look, see for himself. Oh, he was talking to someone on the phone. That makes a little bit more sense. Say. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the other problem here. You've got your doppelganger shenanigans, but then you also have this happening, right? The kid you actually care about is out there. God knows what's happened to him. <laughs> Not very long.
I have no friends. <laughs> that kid's got fire. I like the cut of his jib. Perpetrating this ain't about the, the vote, of course, right? It's about the money. It has nothing to do with the Cornish ham partner we have. Right. Exactly. You know what that's all about. <laughs> I looked it up. William Shatner was 64 in this movie. He looks good for 64. No, no, no. We got more important shit. Shut the hell up. <laughs> wow, he's so impressed. You know the kid's kidnapped, right? Do you care? I suppose you got to manage him, right? Oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, because he can't play the game now. <laughs> I thought that was the whole point. They must have thought they were getting back sooner than that. That's what it is. They thought that you know, pay the you get a ransom call, you pay the ransom. It'll be done in a couple days. I get it. <laughs> yeah, play the sports angle. <laughs> Look at it. You just got played like a fiddle. Yep. <laughs> he played the sports angle on his ass. If he was a fish, he'd be mounted on the wall right now. <laughs> yeah. Work this shit. He's a master manipulator. Very well done. My brother would have been proud. <laughs> Boot it down. Slap him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even at the time, I thought the whole thing about people not knowing computers was overplayed. That was for grandmothers. The hell is all this? This is not a good baseball team. Why are we watching this crap? Oh, it's um the Rich Boys team. Okay. Why would the nerds be playing baseball? Ah, shit. Yeah. Rudy can't do shit. He better not be able to do shit. Yeah. Nerd. Nerds can't be athletic. This is 1996. Yeah, yeah, you better come in because he can't hit worth the shit. Don't tell me he's going to be on the other. He's going to be on this team. He's going to have to play both sides. There's no way because that's what they seem to be setting up here. Yeah. That's what they seem to be setting up here. How are we going to pull this shit off? Yeah, steroids. Yeah, you better get back, bitch. Why is he hitting again? He just had a home run. I guess I don't really understand baseball practice. That's right. Smash that window. <laughs> That's right. Chump. Oh, he's, he's calling his shot. You wouldn't make a pimple on... Uh, what was that dude's name? I don't remember, but you know. You know who it is. Hot dog eating, beer drinking, 1920s. At least the commercials aren't a problem anymore. Now that, you know, I'm doing it from the video. <laughs> yeah. I cannot fucking believe that they're doing this. This movie isn't complicated enough. Fucking hell. Huh. Do you know if he can catch? Can he throw? Like, just because he can hit, that don't mean shit. You still have to play defense. Huh. Huh. I recognize that actor, too. You can't, By the way, you can't do this in the playoffs either. You can't just bring in new players. 
Man, they're driving me crazy with this shit. Your your roster is locked before you go to the playoffs for a reason. For prevent this kind of shit. <laughs> it's another ransom note. Look at him looking the part. Yeah. Why did they make Donis Davis a military person in every role he did? <laughs> they heard, didn't they? Yeah, how's that going to work? We know they are. He's in the newspaper? Is that what it is? Oh, that's what they're worried about. He's going to help the other team make the championship. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Suck. Yeah, how are we going to do that? <laughs> but like, you know... Look, I know this is a Home Alone comedy. I have to keep reminding myself. Home Alone comedy, logic doesn't exist in this world, okay? But you would have to watch him play defense for him to be on your fucking team, man. Even if he was allowed on the roster. Cause just because he can hit, that don't mean shit. Plenty of people can hit. Where they lose a the game is on defense, right? <laughs> what about tomorrow? Yeah, like I said. Yeah, you're going to be with us. That's what this is all about. He already heard the name before, by the way. <laughs> that kid's going to kill those three, eat them, make a, a hiking suit out of their, their skin, and then hike back out and make it to the stockholders meeting in time. This is how you not... Ah, shit, the girl's watching. God damn it. Guess what's about to happen. Fuck. The girl's watching. Plus, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> this guy's an asshole, so that's going to get his back up. He's about to knock him in the next fucking week. Bitch. I would have to, too. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch. He caught the ball. That's pretty badass, actually. That's right. I'm going to knock you out of here, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You better keep your head on swivel. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Shit. Not only is he a nerd, which he already liked. Now he's a nerd jock. We won't have that for another 10 years in the real world. Nerd jocks are awesome. Yeah, she, she's not looking anymore. I can suck again. No, there is that. That is her, actually. Yeah, <laughs> pissed. Huh. So we're officially dating then. What's What's been going on between these two? <laughs> you just kissed him. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> so you're trash, huh? Like, what, what's going on here? You trying to play all sides? Like, what are you doing here? Trash. <laughs> Feels like you have some buyer's remorse with your current situation. Or should we say situation? Yeah. <laughs> really? Shaking hands. What are they doing back there? You pouring something in a carton? The fuck? Is that like a box of cereal? Kid's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the milk's already in the cereal. You might as well eat it. Just saying. Not going to happen. How about I shove that pin up your ass? 
John Babcock. I want to thrash him. You only need one hand of unbroken fingers to sign a paper. Just saying. Yeah, they're not going to do shit. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Eat my ass. My impotent fury is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been more intimidated by crossing guards. <laughs> yeah, your way <laughs> is the highway. You three are going to be dead. <laughs> you ain't scary. They can give you glasses, a uh, fake glass, right? I assume that's what he's wearing. Incompetent ass. Unbelievable. Ah, yes. Here we go with the Cornish hand. Chew this scenery. <laughs> He's going to troll this kid. Look. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do it in front of this son of a bitch. Look at him. He's in full troll mode. I would rather him walked in the room and seen the kid and not being told otherwise, right? That'd have been better. <laughs> In fact, let's go to a different room and practice this. <laughs> That's right. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> he almost had a subtle line delivery until he did that crazy eyes. <laughs> this is a solid movie. Cast William Shatner makes it epic. <laughs> no shit. How do you not know he's behind it? That does work in his favor, that's true. <laughs> the script is tight too, man. Because this is why he doesn't sabotage what they're trying to do with this ringer. Because he thinks their guy's going to fail. Like, that that's tight writing, man, I'm telling you. There's so many instances where the writing is so good. Which you wouldn't think for a movie like this. That's right. Get his ass. Busted. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody suspected. That's so interesting. That's right. Beat his ass. See, now it would also say this isn't necessary. Signing the paper isn't necessary anymore. Really? Really? Now, that surprises me. But they don't need to sign the papers anymore, right? Because he thinks he's going to fail at the meeting. That's why I thought they were going with that. Hey, he's sleeping. I guess we can't beat him up right now. Guess we'll wait. It can wait till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I did look up some uh, synonyms for incompetent. Ineffectual. They're all weaker than the word incompetent, really. Ineffectual. Amateurish. All the obvious ones, right? He 
He's going to take the tape and kick it. This motivates him to run away. Okay. You see, this is what I mean when a tight script. You explain in the, on, the, on the screen why characters do what they do. Things are motivated, right? Him just randomly running away when he's had complete control of the situation for three days doesn't make sense. So you create a reason for him to run away. They do this every, every step. There's a reason why he stops playing like shit because a girl shows up. And he has a little bit of interest in her. Everything is motivated, right? There's a reason why uh, Mike is not going to sabotage the ringer and expose him as a ringer because he thinks he's going to fail. Everything is motivated. Like it's just that, That's a tight script, man. You got to go to where a movie is is and what it's trying to be. And you may not like this. Oh, this is, oh, I thought he was trying to get help to find them. This was his way home. He was using it as his way home. That's brilliant. Okay. Gotcha. I thought he was, he was hoping somebody would find him. No, this is just his way home. See, again, motivated, right? You, you may not like this kind of movie, so you'll think this movie sucks. But for this kind of movie, it's the best of this kind of movie I've seen. It's as good as Home Alone. Just didn't have the budget, you know, and the marketing wasn't a theatrical release. That's the only reason. If it had that budget and that marketing, and there, I, I think there's a few problems here because we don't have much. <laughs> not a really. That's another thing you can't do if you're trying to be the next Home Alone. You can't keep doing the Star Trek shit. Like the, the one Star Trek joke is enough. This is their fourth one. That's too much. So that's bad writing. <laughs> Why are you calling her? I still didn't know she was dating anybody, so that does change the whole thing. <laughs> We're friends, aren't we? Why would I not be glad you called? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm obviously up for a reason. I'm trying to study. Yeah, every, all day, every day. <laughs> he does feel superhuman to everybody because he pretty much is. He's not a jock, but every, in every other way, he's a master of every room he walks into, right? That kid's sharp. I said I wanted to talk, but you kept it to a three-minute conversation. I see. Yeah. Like I said, these kids never had it. These kidnappers, they might as well be kids. These kidnappers never had a chance, man. He can hotwire this shit, and he's out of here. He's going to actually make it to the board meeting. And he's got a tape proving Mike did it. Uh, what I was going to say, though, there's there's not much time left. There's like uh, 20 minutes left. I don't know how they can resolve all these different plot lines. or buy enough more they can share. Because that's 20 minutes with commercials, right? So there's not much screen time left. Which is why he's going to show up to the board meeting. But it's... That's what I mean, like, you know, you'd have a longer runtime for a theatrical movie and it'd make it a better movie. There's a few things that are cut, corners are cutting here that is a little bit of a problem. We need to see more of them in the woods, him cooking for them. Yeah, dude's going to learn how to drive. That's what, the big brain, right? He's going to learn how to drive stick, matter of fact. 20 minutes, he's got it down. Doesn't know where he is, like, in... in Physical space as far as the roads go, but he's going to make it back in time. Give this a Hollywood budget. The acting's fine, so I wouldn't even change any of the actors. Another 20 minutes of runtime. One more pass on the script. This would have been as good as Home Alone. Like the, that's how impressive it is. <laughs> cd Rob's not hard to figure out, you dumbass. This kid learned how to drive stick in 20 minutes. 23rd annual. So that means they weren't a tech company at first. What were they originally? IBM made... No, we didn't have printers. Where did, how did IBM start? I won't get sidetracked, but... It's interesting that this company isn't sold. 
maybe it's typewriters. I think they started with typewriters and you switch into computers. I think that's what they did. This could be the same kind of thing. <laughs> we figured it out. Yeah, this is stock fraud, by the way. You can go to prison for this shit. You try to run a ring around, man. People have done this shit before. You will go to prison. Yeah, exactly. What are you accusing me of? <laughs> we both got shit. We both got fat in the fire. So he's going to get the speech before the other kid can show up. Interesting. <laughs> Dude, you drove it this far. You can handle it. Don't act like you're having problems now. Unless you ran out of gas. I see. See, that's another thing. With the Hollywood budget, you would have... Oh, he's got a hot wired again, I see. So he's going to go to jail. He ain't making it to the board meeting. Oh, he'll fix the computer for him. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. They're really leaning into it. A Hollywood movie, you would have shown establishing shot. We would have seen the cop car. But, you know... <laughs> Incompetent. Hey guys, can you help me start this car? <laughs> you have no spatial awareness. You don't realize they're behind you. I see both these actors too. What if this is shot in Canada? These all feel like Canadian actors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fat chance. Have you seen this car move? Like you can't prove I drove it anywhere. I could be stealing it where it was. You need to stall, man. Yeah, <laughs> he can't stand it. He can't even clap for the fake, right? That's how much he hates that kid. No matter how much you bomb and we all go to prison. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's rich. Why wouldn't you want to be? He's going to walk up here pissed off, which is probably going to help him with this performance. <laughs> Play both sides. <laughs> That's what he gets for asking questions right for his speech. This is bullshit. I'm going to diversify this. I'm taking this into uh, uh, social media. It's something I'm going to invent. He's pissed. That probably helps him. I don't know shit about the Zelda Zenda 2000. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> Why are you so nervous? You're going to bomb. They're nervous three seconds into your speech. Yeah, look at him. He's so happy. That sounds like the next card. <laughs> Sit your fat ass down. Incompetent. What if you were in the bottom of the ninth? Think about it like that. Yeah, right. F you. <laughs> really? This is so interesting, the writing choices they've made in this movie. So the kid does, he, he sucks at the speech, and he continues to suck at the speech, and he gave up. If he hadn't showed up, the, the, the gig is up, man. It, like, they would have lost. Like, 
that's not typically how you write a story like this. You have them excel in their opposite fields, right? <laughs> that's such, such an interesting writing choice. It's more realistic. <laughs> Get the hell out of my way. You're not me. That's not bad for uh, 90s filmmaking technology because I don't think he's a twin. Yeah. Step the fuck back. I got proof, bitch. <laughs> See, they're customing corners, right? They needed 20 more minutes of runtime. <laughs> I'm going to nail this shit. <laughs> Get over here, kid. We're going to do this together. Does he have a button he can push to turn that around? That's uh, that can, that's a computer graphic that's burned into the image. They couldn't make the computer do that, right? You can tell it's CGI. I smell like I've been in the woods for three days. <laughs> hey, that was a big deal. There was a time when we was going to be everything was going to be touch screen, and they realized that's not very effective. That's why we're still using keyboards to this day, right? Touch screen feels futuristic, but it's not practical. Yeah, what kind of stuff? They probably thought it was a stunt. You do stunts during uh, uh, shareholders meetings all the time, right? <laughs> Take a bow, Wooly. <laughs> You're better at public speaking. We're happy again. <laughs> yeah, they, they go straight to the donuts and coffee. Wow. I love how cops just suddenly take a, a collateral damage at the end of this movie. <laughs> I've got proof. A-hole. Yeah, the cops right here. They're going to arrest him. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to prison with us. <laughs> Such a ham. I love it so much. Just even what are you doing with the paper, man? It's brilliant. Yeah. Hey, everybody, listen to this. Some random person. I got some random person to drop his name, and that means everything. We don't have these people in custody. We don't know what their voices are. <laughs> wow. You're under arrest. No chance of this being fabricated evidence. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better sign it. <laughs> You're not going to fight this? You know you've lost. <laughs> we got to wrap this shit up. We ain't got time for the particulars. I'm keeping your pen, by the way. Which I think was his pen originally. Yeah, yeah, but he'll cordially go with the cops. <laughs> of course, now we got to show him when this game because that's very crucial, right? This ain't bad. For the time, this is not bad. It's, I mean, today it would suck, but you know, for the time, it's not bad. <laughs> the hell? So the kid didn't tell you, he didn't clue you in on this, right? You had to find out from a newspaper. He didn't call you last night. You know, it takes, I'm just saying, but I got questions. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He's going to knock you in the next fucking week. Wait, if we're in the ninth inning, they faced each other four times already. What happened in those uh, at-bats? They didn't want to show him getting struck out earlier in the game, right? <laughs> this is for the people that were too slow. Wait a minute, that's what this movie was about. 
<laughs> oh, okay, so that wasn't Oliver. Oliver has gotten three home runs off this punk already this game. I was wondering, because they, they showed him uh, he, he, he had a strike, and I was like, why would they have Oliver do a strike? Oliver's perfect, man. He's about to knock this dude next week in the first pitch. You can't show him fail a little bit. But it was a different kid. <laughs> Wait a minute. This kid was going to be on our team. You can't do this. Huh. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to blast you out of here. You're going to disobey orders. He's going to blast you out of the park. <laughs> None of those said were Oliver, though. Probably the subtext here is that he probably didn't get a home run off him earlier in the game, right? He's already been killing it. Yeah. Bitch move. Crowds fucking hate it when you walk a batter. It shows you're a bitch. You know you can't win. He can't take it, man. His ego's gonna be his undoing. And you you gotta... You gotta t I don't want to get too much into the baseball aspect of things. Yeah. Oh, shit. I won't get into the baseball of it because it doesn't matter. But his ego will be his undoing is my point. <laughs> but I've already gotten two home runs off him this game. We're in the ninth inning. We faced each other four times. What are you talking about? <laughs> you still have weird eyes. Just saying. Yeah. He's going to knock you in the next fucking week. <laughs> Three run homer. The only reason I don't think it's going to be a grand slam is if you wouldn't walk him if you already had three people on base. <laughs> get, that, get that shit out of my face. He went golfing with that one, man. <laughs> that was a low one. That's right, chump. Oh, yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> I'm pulling the kid. He disobeyed direct orders. <laughs> Too slow. Ah, shit, they got him. That's when you just got to run somebody over, man. That's right. Get the fuck out of it. How'd you lose that, man? Oh, they actually contrived a situation where you can just run him over. No, don't. No, that's a bitch move, man. Run him over. Just. I want to see you run him over. Knock. Not only did you knock him out of here, then you knocked his dick into the wall, right? Because you ran him over. Yeah, of course, he gets a girl, too. We all win. <laughs> What's, what happened to your other boyfriend? Have you officially broken up? We haven't seen that. You were kissing him like 10 minutes ago. What is happening? I like how they manipulate the situation so that the pitcher, the guy we don't like, gets a second chance to be embarrassed. Two chances to be embarrassed in one play. That's pretty good. <laughs> Tigers all the way. This is your last few minutes of the rich life. You're going to be poor after this. Go back to your poor gutter life. <laughs> Where's my check? Oh, shit. <laughs> stock? This shit's going to be useless. It is stock. Yeah, fucking right. You're going to go the way of IBM. This stock's going to fucking tank. <laughs> Well, at least now I can send emails. Uh, my dad's job? Ha ha ha. 
<laughs> no, man, I want to go into construction. Unacceptable. That stock's going in the fucking tank, I'm just saying. IBM, they were on top of the world at one time. So, what the fuck was that, like, lookalike shit? I have a girl, I have a female friend that could be your girlfriend. We haven't gotten a complete happy ending to this movie. You need a girlfriend. Here she is. She's rich. That's right, third wheel. Get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. What are we doing? I thought that was for him. She wants a three-way. I thought she knew. She likes kissing more than one boy at a time. <laughs> what are we doing here? Huh. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. So we're definitely doing three-way, right? It's so confusing what they're doing with her character. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, you slut? Is that Jewel State? Holy shit. No fucking way. Wow. This is a very Canadian movie. She came in here for one line. Another one who's considered an asshole on set, by the way, Jewel State. Uh, I don't know, man. You're too much of a nerd for me. Good shit. <laughs> exactly. I knew. I fucking knew he was going to say that. It popped in my mind a second before it happened. <laughs> wow. The same kid played both of them. Fascinating. <laughs> I just want to confirm that as Jewel State. If she even got credit, she only had one line. Yep, that was her. Well, that was interesting. I really like it. A really good movie. Really good script. It's the only thing I don't understand. I can't wrap my mind around what the hell they're doing with... Uh, what is her character's name? Fiona. The hell are you doing? Like that, that, none of that makes any sense. And again, that's a, you know, that's why they need another twenty minutes of runtime. They need to explain a few things. I bet that this was a hundred twenty page script. There's only ninety minutes because it, you know it feels like it. It says, did they say it was Showtime? This this was almost exactly ninety minutes, I think. So it feels like it was set for a two hour time slot on regular uh, commercial air TV, right? That's what it looks like. I don't think there's any cussing, so it really feels like it was one of those. Showtime could have financed it, but then it went on some other network. And then eventually made it to Showtime, I assume. Definitely made for TV movie. But I bet there was just, there was 20, 30 pages on the covering floor that would have explained everything. I'm going gonna, gonna to be very interested in looking this up and, and finding out the background between all this, what's happened. And, and uh, the TV shows will have a what could have been section, which will probably explain all, all my questions I have, right? But I don't understand what they're doing with their character. None of it makes any sense. She's kissing the bully. But even before and after that, she's pursuing the other kid. And you're not getting I just want to be friends energy. I'm just saying we're not. you know. And maybe I'm reading too much into that. But then she's sitting with Rich Boy and kissing him. But then she's walking over to the other one and flirting with him. Like... What is none of that makes any sense? None of it adds up. That's the only part of the movie I don't think is tight. The rest of it, like you know, William Shatner giving up so quick, like that's just 
it, that's this is the movie that is right you know the, and how incompetent the the criminals are and they, they accept this evidence and all the shit that I pointed out I'm just having fun with them it's part of the genre it's, it's the home alone none of home alone makes any sense either right like you know none, none of this shit holds up to scrutiny it's not supposed to it's not that kind of movie so no that's all fine I have no problem with any of that stuff it's, I would have done exactly what they did here you know, I've written a couple of these kind of movies right and, and you just you don't want to get bogged in details. The, the the core demographic audience is probably 14 to 15, but a family-friendly film, the, the parents can also enjoy it with your kids. Your kids can be 12 to 15. Probably, you know, um, what, what I guess I would say clean-cut families. Like, you know, they're not really going to be watching action movies with a bunch of gore and guns and stuff. And, you know, so you don't want... That kind of audience, you do not want to bog them down with the details. Like, it's just... You could have spent another five minutes explaining how they actually got him. You know, I wouldn't have minded this. I, I wouldn't have minded the scene where, like, he fixed the cop's computer and, and you know, uh, convinced them to help him. But they, you don't need it. You know, they, they show the computer. You know what they're going to do with the computer. They don't, you know, actually show it, but then they refer to it. And him showing up when he did was good. One of the most, what I think was the most ballsy moves they made. Because... These movies tend to want the characters to have a win, right? Oliver lost at the end. He lost. He did not execute the speech. And if the kid had not escaped, that was a complete failure. Everything would have been for nothing. The entire plot of the movie would have been for nothing. They would have lost. The stock would have tanked. Mike would have been in control. Even if, you know, the next day he gets arrested. That's still a loss. And they, they stuck it. They stuck with it. He lost. He failed. And he didn't even stand up to Mike. Mike comes up and puts an arm around him, kind of push him away. I expect him to stand up to him at least. Maybe you can't give a good speech, but you stand up to him and say, no, I'm going to do this. No, man, he just lost. Sometimes you lose in real life. That's damned impressive for this kind of movie. Like, and I don't even know if that's good writing or not. Because, like, you know, for this guy, what you're trying to do with this kind of movie, like, in Home Alone, he wins. The kid wins. This would have been, like, the kid losing to the home invaders and they're literally seconds away from killing him when the cops come in this is this basically what they were doing here like he lost it took outside intervention to save the movie that's interesting you know and maybe a, a small thing like that could be what kept this movie from blowing up and being you know part of the cultural zeitgeist i don't know i mean it's just it's such a bold move would not expect i was expecting just nail the speech right but it's realistic so i'm damned impressed with the uh, the writer I was on a break, so I looked up, to, tried to look up the budget because I estimated five million, and I don't know about that. It may have been more than that. It could have been like ten million, you know, something like that. Because uh, I, there's no information on the budget of this movie anywhere. I don't know why that's not available. Usually, like the first, if, if a new movie, the budget's available just because that's the way the new laws are, right? But 10, 15 years ago, you'd have to wait a couple years, and then the budget would come out. Like you couldn't find out immediately after a movie was shot what the budget would be. But I don't, you know, I don't know what the secret was here. But anyway, um, one of the reasons I was saying that was I know the Sci-Fi Channel used to pay independent film uh, makers for movies. They'd be, you'd have to have a completely finished movie. It's completely done. They won't pay you up front. But if you come to them, here's our movie. They'll look at it. And if they accept it, then they will pay you. And what they would pay you is either 750000 or a million dollars. It depended on, you know, how good the movie was. You either get $750,000 or you get a million. Either way, if your budget was $2,000, you would get $750,000. If your budget was $10 million, you would get $750,000. So you would get that amount of money regardless off the top, right? So my, one of my business plans back in the... Uh, guess, I guess it, the time period I'm talking about is 2005 to 2015. I was trying to get a movie done with knowing this because I had a contact with Sci-Fi Channel. We can get our movie on Sci-Fi Channel. They would pay us if the movie was good enough, right? So you, may, you had to make sure you had really good production quality. The sound has to be great. It has to look good. You know, maybe, maybe you don't necessarily have to have great sets, great costumes, great acting, but you have to have great sound and it has to look good. And if you remember back in that time period, think back. Think about how many shitty movies, you know, quote unquote shitty movies were on the Sci-Fi Channel back then. That's what was going on. They wanted a huge library of independent movies to fill out their, their library, right? You know, just, just to burn time. And so you, I remember there was just a lot of crappy sci-fi movies, specifically is what they were looking for. 
And it's hard to shoot a sci-fi movie for that little amount of money. So you have to cut corners somewhere, right? So they were paying a million dollars 2005 to 2015. What was Showtime paying back in 1996? That was the basis of what I was thinking. But the more I look at this, like, I don't know, man. Like, it, it was probably more. It doesn't really matter. I'm just obsessed with the behind-the-scenes details. That's why I'm going to stick at this at the end. I'm not going to waste time during the movie talking about it. Just, that's what I could find. <laughs> What's always good about these stories, oh, you incompetent ass, is uh, how... <laughs> Before we get into this corner sham, I want to finish this thought. Um, I always love this. There was one uh, kid and play were in a movie, and I can't remember. It was a long time. It was, it was shortly after they did House Party, right? They were in a movie where it was like, it was kind of like this, but it was a twist in that two kids get transferred to a school at the same time, right? And the two kids don't know each other. One of them is a really smart nerd, but he's weak. And the other one is a jock, and he's a moron, right? He's, he's a street thug, essentially. Like, you know, he's like a gangbanger or something. Um, and he, but he's, he, So he's really tough and big, and, but he's a moron. And at the school they're going to is a very severe class system. So the smart kids are on this half of the school, and all the thugs and malcontents and poor people are on the other side of the school, right? Like, and it's divided. They don't really interact much. So as they're coming in, there was a computer problem. And they get they get accidentally switched to the other school. So the nerd goes to where all the, the gangbangers are. And the street thug goes to where all the nerds are, right? And so, they, you know, it's, it's basically a case of mistake. And then you have two worlds colliding. We're in, our, we're in each other's worlds. And they didn't know each other, but then they find each other because they realize this must be a mistake. And it takes a while to settle out. But they both thrive in the other's world. We're like... The thug, if he had gone to the gangbanger side, he'd probably been ruling shit. Now there's a, uh, uh, there was some bully there. He was he was scary, and he was running the whole s that side of the school and stuff, and he was intimidating. Was like, arr, arr, you know, he's all strong and shit. If our uh, street thug had gone there, he would have kicked his ass up and down the <laughs> the block and been ruling the place. Like, he would have completely hit. He wouldn't have been no sweat. He would have completely hit the situation. If the nerd had gone to the uh, the nerd side of the school, he was the smartest kid ever. And there was a nerd bully, right? And he would have kicked the nerd bully's ass mentally and just completely embarrassed him and been running the whole side of the school, right? But they were in the opposite sides. So the nerd had to somehow navigate the gangster area. And the thug had to somehow navigate the mental area. And also there was a nerd girl love interest, and there was a, a gangster girl love interest. But I just, I've always loved the idea of somebody being so far outside their comfort zone. They, they have, they rule their little kingdom. And then suddenly they're put in a different kingdom that's completely outside their comfort zone. And they somehow find a way to get along and, and survive when the other person would have easily destroyed that. They were completely within their comfort zone and would have destroyed that, right? They would have been awesome, right? had no problem whatsoever handling that situation. So I've always loved that, right? Like, you know, if, if everything had worked out the way it was supposed to and there hadn't been this computer glitch, both kids would have been perfectly fine where they were. They would have had no problem whatsoever. There would have been no drama, no tension. But the fact that it was switched, we had all kinds of drama and tension. And they were trying to give each other tips. The, 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 the thug was trying to teach the nerd to be a little bit harder. And the nerd was trying to teach the thug how to navigate all the mental shit he was having to do, right? Great movie. I, I wish I could remember the name. I have no clue what, what it is. I don't even know Ken plays real uh, names to look up the actors, right? So, but um, it was a 90s movie. It was probably around the same time, actually. But this movie reminds me a lot of that because it gets set, like, here's the thing. The other kid is just really smart and can navigate any situation. You could drop that kid in any situation. Yeah, he sucks at sports. But if he was properly motivated, I bet he could be analytical about it. And figure out the geometry, because baseball is just geometry, essentially. The other problem is you have to train your muscles. That's what happened to Michael Jordan. You can be, you know, as analytical as you want and good at sports and want, and cause as competitive as you want to be, but you have to have, have had years of training your muscles to do these actions to be able to excel at the highest level, right? But the but I was gonna my original premise when I started talking about this was obviously if Rich Boy hadn't been kidnapped, he would have been fine navigating all these scenarios, right? 
And if the jock hadn't been kidnapped, if the jock had been kidnapped instead, like say they saw him on the street and thought he was a rich boy and they kidnapped him instead, he'd been fine navigating the woods because he's athletic, right? And he could have just ditched him, ran, and then, you know, made it somewhere and, and been fine. But here's what's interesting. The rich boy, I think, is the better of the two, fundamentally. Like, they, they're not better in their own arenas, in their own kingdoms. The rich boy is better fundamentally because he's just smarter. Like, you see, what he's, he's running rings around these kidnappers in the woods. He's not struggling to adapt to the woods the way the jock is struggling to adapt to rich boy's life. So this isn't, this isn't on the level of the movie I'm talking about where both sides are struggling. Well, that kid is in complete command of the situation. He's, he's running rings. He's got a way for them to be tracked. You know, he's got the coins all over the place. He's helping them so he's useful. So they feel like or he's manipulating the situation left and right. You know, and so... In the, meanwhile, the jock is struggling to just do basic things like hold his cue cards, right? So I just think, it, you know, this... I'm more interested when both sides are struggling, but but uh, what I find is the rich kid character is fascinating, right? He's just a, a child prodigy. He's like the Leonardo da Vinci of his time, and you drop him in any situation, they can master it very quickly, right? So this is just it's, this is its own kind of interesting, if that makes any sense. This is kind of interesting as a techno nerd from the uh, '90s. The new hyperspeed CPU is our latest technological advance. You would say advancement, I would think. Complete with enhanced virtual memory. What's interesting about that, other than uh, hyperspeed, everything else is like terms that were, were in use at the time or would be in use soon. Like virtual memory, for instance, was a thing. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was simulated memory, where it's like you have you can have a certain amount of hardware memory, right? And then with virtual memory, they would put another layer of memory on top of that. It's like, I think it was, it was almost like you have a two sides to a coin. It's one coin, but it has two sides. I think that's what, what virtual memory means. That could be way off, but that's my old-ass uh, memory of what they were talking about back then. Right? So in other words, uh, I remember you'd have a 20-gig hard drive. I know that sounds ridiculous now, right? But it was a 20-gig hard drive. You could turn it into a 40-gig hard drive with virtual memory. And essentially, you would have 20, 40 gig you could use. So that was a big deal back then. Hyperspeed is not something I think we ever talked about back then. You know, I don't think there's a hyperspeed CPU, but the rest of it's pretty, pretty tight, you know?